Okay, I was asked the question, what, uh, why, does sometime, why do sometimes you get uh, different answers when you're regarding uh, doing, dealing with trig questions? And so I made this little graphic here to, to help go over a couple things. And so in, in other words, sometimes you get different answers. And, and why do you get different answers? So what I want to point out here is first I have three right triangles. They're all 35 degrees. That is, this is 35 degrees, this is 35 degrees, and that's 35 degrees. The proof that they're at least all the same is I'll show you that I can bring it down here, and you can look at that, and you can say, OK, that's the same. And then I can take this one over here, and I can say, all right, that looks like it's the same. This is the same up here. So I've got 35 degrees, or have 35 degrees, uh, on these three different right triangles. And so what that means is they're all 35 degrees here, but this x and this x and this x are all different lengths. And this y and this y, and this is the length here, and this length right here, denoted with y, is, is a different length. So I have different lengths. But what happens with the trigonometric functions is that the ratio of this length to this length stays the same for all 35 degrees. The ratio for this to this length stays the same for all 35 degrees. Actually, it stays the same for this length and that length, and this length and that length, and this length and this hypotenuse. So the what's what stays the same is the ratio, and we're going to take a look at that with some numbers in, in just a moment. We're going to take a look here. Uh, so a, a tangent function is the opposite over the adjacent. So here we have the tangent function here is if we're talking about this angle, this is the opposite side, and this is the adjacent side. And so that would be the tangent function. So the tangent of 35 degrees would be the opposite, y here, and x here. So whatever number that is, just some pure number. If this is 1 and this is 2, then the tangent would be 1 half. If this is 1 and this is 4, then the tangent would be 1 fourth, and, and, and so on. This uh, particular comment doesn't, I'm not here to address those issues, but to, to try to answer the question of why do we keep getting different answers, and why is it that different answers are correct? Well, we're going to take a look at that. So here's what I have. Uh, I've drawn a right triangle, and the length of this side is 1.00, and the length of the hypotenuse here is 3.00. Now, you might ask yourself, if the 0 represents nothing, why is it there? What does it mean if I have a 0 there? Well, it turns out that if I just put the number 1 here, that's indicating a certain level of accuracy. Uh, if I put 1.0, that's indicating that I'm a little bit more accurate in my measurement. And if I put 1.00, I'm telling the person who's looking at this that I'm accurate within a hundredth of an inch. And so, you know, it's, it, it's not perfect, but I'm accurate within this amount. And we'll take a look at why that accuracy is important in, in just a moment. Same thing here. I'm not 3 inches. I'm 3.00. I'm accurate to the hundredth place. So that tells me how accurate a measurement that I've really made. So we're looking at this. We have the sine. Oh, let me come back over here. The tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. And I stuck the D there at the end because T-O-A-D spells toad, which is the mnemonic device that I use uh, to remember the tangent function. And so sine, the mnemonic device that I use to remember sine is uh, S-O-H-O, -O, Soho. It's a place in London. It's a place in New York City. Uh, and so I just remember the word SOHO. And, and that helps me remember the sine function is the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. So we have this right here. 1 is the opposite length, and 3 is the 3.00 is the length of the hypotenuse. So that's 1 over 3. And so the, that's the sine of, instead of running this in a fractional form, we'll run this out in a decimal form. And you know as well as I do, perhaps, that if you stick 1 over 3 in your calculator, you get 0 0.333, an infinite number of 3s, never repeating, uh, or, or never, never ending decimal there. And so if you said, OK, well, let me punch that into my calculator. Uh, let's see what the inverse uh, of the sine of 0.33333 is. We would come up with 19.450 degrees. This means degrees. And so we might say, OK, well, this implies that I'm accurate within a thousandth. And, but my measurement up here was only accurate within a hundredth. Well, I'm only accurate, I'm showing here, my calculator gave me the zero, so I might think, well, that's accurate. No, it's not accurate because the 
accuracy of my measurement up here was only to the hundredths place, and now I seem to be displaying down here that I'm accurate to, my th to the thousandths place. It's not the case. We don't know what this number is, so it's not right to use it. The correct answer here, if you had 1 divided by 3, and you only took a look at, you know, the, in this case we looked at for the four decimal places, would be 19.45 and not the 0. All right, let's take a look at another example here, and that is the ratio, remember this was 1 in our example up above, and see, it was 1 and 3. Now we have the, uh, the length of the opposite side, this being 19 degrees, we think, or somewhere close to that, uh, is the, the length of this is 2, and the length of this is 6. So you say, okay, well, 2 over 6, I divide 2 over 6, I get, look, I get... 0 0.333. The ratio hasn't changed. It stays the same. But you'll notice the accuracy of my measurement here was only to, to the hundredths place and only to the hundredths place. And so I crunched in down here. I said, oh, well, the accuracy of this is to the ten thousandths place. That's not true. But if I then do the inverse relationship on my calculator here, I see that I get 19.450. I only had numbers to the accuracy of one hundredths, and now I'm seeming to say that I'm more accurate than I really am, which is just wrong. So now what happens if we take a look at it? We say, well, we only got two places. We measured only to two places after the decimal to the hundredths place. So now let's take a look at the sign, and we say 0 0.33. This is accurate only to the hundredths. Do the inverse function on that, and what you get is 19.26. 8775. This seems to imply that we're accurate all the way out here. Let's see, this is the tenths, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands. We're accurate to the millionth place? Not at all possible. Can't happen. Our measurement was taken into the hundreds place, and so our answer that we get, if we take it to the hundreds place, means that we should say 19.26. That's as accurate as we can be. Uh, this number might be correct, but we don't have any evidence to back that up. We don't have any proof because we didn't take measurements that accurately. So here we get two seemingly wildly different answers because where we truncated it, where we cut off, it has to do with the accuracy. So if we said our uh, the sine of uh, two sixths uh, coming out to being 0.33 because that's the accuracy to which we had the measurement, we would get this answer. But if we said, oh, well, my calculator told me that I have 3333, 3, 3, 3, then that would tell us that we had not only this, but probably one more answer out here. I, I truncated it when I, when I did this. So what happens is these seem to be two wildly different answers. The difference in these two answers comes from the level of accuracy. And this is the only answer that we can know be true. And we don't know that the 8 and the 7 and the 7 and the 5 are true. Our calculator gave them to us, but it wasn't within the measurement of the level of our accuracy. All right, let's take a look at another example. And the other example is what I've done is in a drawing program that I have. It's what I'm using to make this video for you. Uh, in the drawing program that I have, this I just stretched this. So proportionally, this has been stretched. And so I stretched it a little bit more than two times the amount. Uh, see, this was 1, and now I'm at 2.14. So I stretched a little bit more than that. And then I just used the measurement system that I have in here, which is only accurate to two decimal places. And so this now has been stretched uh, this right triangle right here, same proportion, has been stretched so that it's 2.14, and this right here, which was 3 over here, is now uh, 6.41, correct to two decimal places. I've only made a measurement correct to two decimal places. So I punch that into my calculator, and I say if I have the sine of 2.14 divided by 6.41, I come up with the sine is 0.33. There's our first two threes that we had that, that seemed to be the level of accuracy we had. But my calculator tells me that I have an accuracy of, of a thousandths here and ten thousandths, you know, and a hundred thousandths and to the millionth, and I don't have that. Uh, but if I then believe this number and I punch that number in, I go, oh, well, I have 19.5028. And there were a bunch of numbers here, and I chopped them off. Anyway, I this isn't accurate, because I only have an accuracy of up to 0.33 uh, to the hundredths place. So doing crunching that again, I come up with, if I just take the sign of 0.33, I get 19.26. And I, these numbers, I don't know. They're, they're not accurate. 
they might be true, but the odds of them being true are really, really small. And so here I have two seemingly wildly different numbers. It has to do with the level of accuracy that I had. Let's take a look at uh, one more example here. And the other example is I simply just took this, this puppy right here. Actually, I took this one right here, and I stretched it 4.14 times. And so I have here. So now this angle has not changed. It hadn't changed one bit. What's changed is this length and that length. The ratio between these two has not changed, except for the fact that I'm only measuring to two decimal places. And so I come over here and I put the sine of 4.14 divided by 12.41, and I come up with the sine of 0 0.3336019. None of this is true. None of this is accurate. I'm only accurate to two places. But if I punch this number into my calculator, I get this number right here, which is not this number right here. So um, I wind up with having uh, wildly different answers, but you'll notice that if I, each time if I just tell it I have uh, a correct to two decimal places, I get the same numbers, 0 0.26, 0 0.26, and 0.26. I hope that has answered your question. If not, please let me know, and I'll be glad to uh, further explain, and I wish you good luck with what you're doing. Keep a learning. We need more people like you who are trying to make things better and learn more and be a more productive citizen, and I appreciate that.